Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. So I want to talk about something that drives me so crazy. A lot of people don't understand how science works. Scientists run into this a lot during conversations with certain people. You know, evolution deniers, climate change deniers, etc. I have a few in my personal life that are regularly irritating. There was this meme going around that said, I don't believe in science. I trust science. Science is not a belief system. It's not like believing in an afterlife. It's more like trusting a loyal friend. It's a way of thinking and learning. This is my attempt to eliminate the misconception. Here we go. The process science goes through is something we call the scientific method. Now, there are a lot of complicated versions out there, a lot of which are specialized for certain fields. I'm not going to go through all of that. What I want to do is emphasize the underlying principles that make science reliable. First, you make an observation. Basically, you notice something happened. Pretty much everyone does this all day. Even babies do this. Sounds easy enough, right? Second, you create a hypothesis. Remember that thing you just noticed? Now you got a gut feeling about why it happened. This is a really dangerous place to stop because our gut feelings are wrong a lot. And unfortunately, it's where most people stop. Some people don't even go that far. They just let some other completely unqualified person tell them what the gut feeling is. It's very human. We're probably all guilty of this on less important things. But that's why science doesn't stop there. For this gut feeling to become science, we still need to test it by making a prediction. Basically, we ask ourselves, what other things does this gut feeling suggest? Once we have one of those things, we look for it in an experiment. If the experiment doesn't match the prediction, then we know our gut feeling is at least a little wrong. So we go back, change it to match the experiment, and start over. So if the experiment does match the prediction, does that mean we got it right? Excellent question. And the answer is no. One experiment isn't enough. The most important part of science is the peer review process. See, the first scientist has to publish their work. That way, other scientists in the same field can see it, critique it, make their own predictions, and perform their own experiments to test the original gut feeling. Only after many experiments by many scientists do we consider it to be fact. Only when we're 99.99% sure do we call it a theory. Without peer review, a scientist's gut feeling means nothing. I mean, if a doctor tells you you're unhealthy in some way, then you get a second opinion. If the second opinion agrees, then you usually trust it. That's what science is like. Except you're getting tens of thousands of opinions instead of just two. And you're getting them from the people that know what they're doing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not policing your thoughts or anything. Everyone is entitled to an opinion and should have the freedom to share it. They're just not always entitled to an opinion that matters when making policy decisions. As a scientist, though, I'm aware of how much support these controversial ideas get from experts in those fields. Everyone's fine when science makes their lives better. But when it brings the way they live into question, OMG, everybody duck and cover. All of a sudden, science is the bad guy. People tend not to like change. See, science takes the fact that we're human into consideration, and it keeps our gut feelings in check. It's there for us to trust, and we need to trust it to survive as a species. Got anything to add to this conversation? As always, please share in the comments. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.